Alright. Well, come on, Tari! Alright, how are we feeling tonight, guys? Awesome! Oh, come confused. on! Fire <laughs> that! Well, um, Sean has given me the charge to preach to you guys tonight, and, um, and come on. so far tonight has been a really incredible and fun time just to kind of, you know, <laughs> I guess it's just tonight is, is uh, family, and um, and it's I love the lesson that um, that Sean has asked me to preach tonight uh, because we're going to be talking about um, what does it mean to please God. Ooh. In Ephesians five eight through ten, it says, "For you were once in darkness, but now you are in the light. Of, uh, you are in you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness." righteousness and truth and find out what pleases the Lord. Mm. So tonight that's what we're going to be focusing on is finding out what exactly pleases God. Wow. Point number one, how can we do that? Mm. Firstly, in order for us to learn how to, uh, on how to please God, we, we got to start by looking at Jesus' life. In John 8, 29, it says, The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do what pleases him. John 5, 30 says, By myself I can do nothing. I judge only as I hear, and my judgment is just. For I seek not to please myself, but him who sent me. So looking at Jesus' life, he, he performed a, a miracles through healing, casting out demons, even feeding over 5,000 people. But even through all of that, he still admitted that he could do nothing by himself. Ultimately, pleasing God was his main priority and what he sought after. Um, I think of the example in Matthew 26, in uh, verse 39, when he was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he was asking to not go to the cross, he said, yet not as I will, but as you will. So we can see that it was always Jesus' intention to please God. And, um, and you know, the concept of pleasing someone, uh, other than yourself, is such an unnatural thing to do. Um, I think of, like, you know, different types of relationships that we have today. We have uh, friendships, dating, marriage. And, um, and the thing is, is that in every... Um, in all relationships, learning how to please the other person is, is quite a process. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think of, you know, even with, uh, with dating, for example, you know, like prior to, to when a brother and a sister, before they start dating, you know, there's that moment where they're like, oh man, I, I like her, or, mm -hmm. or she's like, oh, I like him. And then, you know, they're, they're super, super encouraging, but then the moment they start to date, that's when the real stuff comes out. Oh, yeah. That's when, that's when, you know, everyone is on, is on uh, two Classic different comedy. pages. And, you know, like, I don't understand. I don't understand why she doesn't appreciate me. Preach it, bro. He just never understands me. He never oh, understands God. me at all. And, it's, and it's, the, it's a crazy thing because it's an unnatural thing to do when it comes to pleasing other people. Because we're so used to, um, to pleasing ourselves. And, um, and it makes me think of a time. Um, there was a, a married couple. I, I heard this story once before. It was quite a funny thing. Um, this, this married couple, they, they just got married, and shortly after their marriage, they were, they were arguing a lot, they were bickering a lot, and then, um, one day it just got so bad, bad to the point that the brother came to a men's midweek, and he was just looking really upset. Um, one of the brothers came up to me and goes, hey, bro, what's, what's going on? What's, why are you so upset? And he goes, bro, we just, my wife and I, we, we've just been arguing all the time. It just doesn't seem like anything is going right. And he just goes, bro, don't worry about it. I got some advice for you. Just buy your wife some flowers. It's like, but bro, that's not gonna work. Just buy her some flowers, but bro, just buy your wife some flowers. Bro, I'm just not really sure. Bro, <laughs> buy your wife some flowers. Mm. So what he does, he goes, okay, bro, amen. So after midweek, he goes, uh, goes to the flower shop, buys a bouquet of flowers, and then he comes at the front door, <laughs> and his wife, she just opens up the door, and she's just ready to go at him again, and then she sees the flowers, and then she just goes, <laughs> I'm so sorry! Baby, I'm so sorry! It's so much! It's my fault! We just you want know. some flowers. Yeah, pretty much. But the thing is, is that when it comes to relationships, it's always about trying to please uh, the other person. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we need these people in our lives. So, in the way how Jesus prioritized pleasing God because he needed God in his life, in the same way, we need to prioritize pleasing God because we need him in our lives as well. Mm. Another way of learning how to uh, please God is learning from more spiritual people through discipling. In uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 1, it says, As for our other matters, brothers and sisters, we instructed you how to live in order to please God, as in fact you are living. Now we ask you and urge you in the Lord Jesus to do this more and more. So Paul right here is reminding the Christians in uh, Thessalonica how they, uh, the leaders, had taught the Thessalonians on how to please God, and he encouraged them to do it more and more. 
And what I love about uh, about the church is that, you know, there are many who have been around for some time. Um, you know, the majority of us have been around for more than, um, I, I'd say, more than a couple of years. And um, and they can we can always give some best advice or discipling ever. Um, I, I do recall a time when I was over at a wedding. And, um, and I was at the reception, I was sitting down, and there's like a whole bunch of disciples coming from different churches, different cities, and I was, and I didn't really know anybody, but there was this one brother um, who was from a, a different state, and I was talking to him, and just, and he just asked me, you know, what are you, what are you studying for your quiet times? And I go, well, you know, I'm just trying to learn how to love God. That's just pretty much um, when I, when I'm, where I'm at right now, spiritually. And he goes, bro, I want to I wanna advise you on something. Instead of reading about how you can love God, read about how God already loves you. And I was like, whoa, wow. And when just even just even the thought of that, I was like, man, God already loves me. He loves me so much. He loves me a lot more than I could ever love him. And my mind was just blown. And it was coming from someone who I, who I hardly even knew, um, who I barely just met. And that's, that's the amazing thing about being in the church is that so many different people have different um, uh, aspects or rather insights of how to please God, how to become a, a great disciple. But when it comes to pleasing God, there's some things that can also stop us from pleasing God, which takes me to uh, point number two. What stops us from pleasing God? Firstly, it's people pleasing. Galatians 1.10. Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of God. So Paul is speaking about um, pleasing people as opposed to pleasing God. He even says, if I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. And I think this is one of the main issues in churches today. People come in with a lot of motives to win over uh, the favor of the congregation or the favor of leadership. Um, and, and when it comes to that, the, the focus now becomes shifted completely away from God. Mm. Um, people pleasing will at some point, it, it will expose itself one way or the other. And, um, and I do recall a time as well when I, when I moved to San Diego uh, back in 2013, I was a young, zealous little Christian you know, going to a weak church. I was nine months old spiritually, and I was so excited. I was like, yeah, I'm going to go, and I'm going to be right, you know, right next to the, the evangelist and everything. This is going to be awesome. And I remember when I first got there, I was trying really hard to appeal to the to the evangelist. I was trying to be buddy-buddy with him, trying to, you know, when you, when you come in as a young Christian, there's uh, there can be a, a temptation to want to get close to the leaders or try to, you know, uh, rub elbows with leadership. And, and it was the worst thing that I, I, one of the worst decisions I ever made as a disciple. Um, eventually, I started to realize that the evangelist wasn't really, it's one of those things where you put in so much effort into a relationship, but you don't really see it reciprocate. And that's kind of what I saw. And then my heart just started to get really hard and I started to get bitter and I started to get really, really upset. And ultimately, spiritually, I was starting to, I, I was getting close to a point where I just didn't know if I wanted to be a Christian anymore. Mm. And that's one of the, the craziest things about people pleasing. People pleasing can I can destroy you in that way. Mm. And that's and that's one of the things that can um, stop you from pleasing God. Another thing is pleasing yourself. In Romans uh, 15 verse 3, it says, For even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. And this is a, uh, another scripture mentioning of Jesus not pleasing himself. Again, we, we read earlier how Jesus... Um, is, he sought after pleasing God, and um, and I think and I wrote down a couple of things, some forms of pleasing yourself before pleasing God. Uh, firstly, I put going on Facebook or Instagram first thing in the morning before your quiet time. Mm -hmm. I'll admit it, I, I've been guilty of this. Where I've woken up and uh, and the first thing I do is just check my phone, and I just see all the messages mm -hmm. that I um, that I've received overnight. You know, we have some friends around the world, so we're we're bound to get all these messages overnight, and I start checking those things first thing instead of actually going into my Bible. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, even Kip um, told me one time, he even admitted, he said, man, uh, bro, I, one of the, the biggest temptations that I have when I wake up is actually going to my phone first before even going to my Bible. Mm -hmm. Because I want to know what's been going on. Yeah, I can check the good news email. I can check uh, of all the, the miracles that God is doing on, on Facebook or on Instagram. But the thing is, is that I need to be going back to my Bible. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the, the, uh, the forms of pleasing yourself. Um, second is showing up late to church. Um, sometimes, I mean, you know, sometimes people, like, things happen, but at the same time, when it starts to become consistent, that's when you start to, that's when you really ask yourself, am I really trying to please God? Uh, thirdly, is reacting to our problems before praying, not the other way around. Ooh. I think that's one of the, the biggest things is that when it comes to, to issues, I, my, my temptation is to want to freak out and start, you know, getting really upset. That's kind of what happened to me uh, last Saturday. I'm going to speak about that uh, a little bit later. 
But sometimes when it comes to these problems, we start to get really upset and we start to get really, really angry before we even start praying to God about it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's another form of pleasing yourself before pleasing God. Thirdly is our sinful nature. In uh, Romans 8, 5, verse, uh, verse 5 through 8, it says, Those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on... Um, sorry. I lost it right there. Oh, have their, those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what that nature desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind of sinful man is death. But the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. The sinful mind is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. So ultimately, our sinful nature is the main thing that can prevent us from pleasing God. Moving on to point three, this point is quite long, so I, I don't really, I don't have much time to go through every single point, but there are some that I wanted to highlight, um, is what pleases God. Firstly, is having and living by faith. Hebrews 11.6 says, And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. So the scripture right here says that we cannot please God without faith. Living in such a way that we are relying on God's word to be true, rather than relying on our knowledge um, and what we see to be true. Trusting in God's loving character. And immediately I think about Chris. Um, I think about Chris and his trust falls. Uh, I don't know what's up with this guy, but he, he just loves doing trust falls with people. Like we'll just kind of, I don't know, we'll just be hanging out and, and occasionally he'll be like, Mira, Mira, trust fall, trust fall. <laughs> And then, and then there's, there's Amari just going, no, no, I'm not doing that, no. And, <laughs> and like eventually he just pressures her into doing it. She's like, all right, fine. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do it, I can't do it. And, um, and, and the thing is, is that I, I can tell you from my own personal experience, I've done it with Chris. I don't think I'll ever do it again. <laughs> I'll never forget that. This is a side, uh, side story really quick, but, um, but I actually did do it. I actually, I was like, you know what? I'm not going to take a step back. I'm just going to fall all the way back. I did, and my head hit the floor. <laughs> so, I tried. No, I, didn't, I didn't feel that. I felt, I felt impact to my head. <laughs> but you know, the amazing thing is that when you, when, uh, when Chris lets you fall, like there's no reason behind it, but when God lets you fall, there is a reason behind oh. it. Oh. <laughs> But, um, but anyway, <laughs> nobody likes trust falls, but they're great, though, uh, because they're, they're a test to see how much you trust the other person to catch you when you fall. And as Christians, this is the life that God has called us to, to trust him every single time we are about to fall. Wow. Secondly, it's pleasing your pe uh, parents. Colossians 3.20 says, children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. And I know that the point right here, it, just, it asks the question, is there an age limit to this as a child? Absolutely not. As a child, you are called to obey your parents. Um, next is prayer. Uh, Proverbs 15, verse 8, it says, The Lord detests the sacrifice of the wicked, but the prayer of the upright pleases him. Mm. 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 4 says, I urge then, first of all, that requests, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for everyone. For kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. My question to you tonight is, how has your prayer life been? Mm. And, and what's, the most encouraging thing uh, that I get from the scripture is that, you know, God is your biggest fan. Um, it, I know that at times it can be really, it, it can be really hard um, to understand that concept, but God is always rooting for you guys, individually. You know, I think of like, you know, Tim and Pascal. They're, they're knuckleheads. They are. But the thing is, is that God is their biggest fan. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Ashley is wild. She is crazy. She, uh, she's just all over the place. But God is your biggest fan. Yeah. Sephora hardly ever talks to anybody. <laughs> but God is her biggest fan. Come on, Sephora. The Clegg family. <laughs> the Clegg family. Even without their new dog. God is still their biggest fan. Oh, come on. We got the singers. Come on, singers. Uh -huh. They are doing their absolute best. Are they baptizing left and right? No, but God is always going to be their biggest fan, mm -hmm. baptizing people or not. Mm -hmm. Mm. And that's the, the one thing that we got to believe is that no matter what happens, God is our biggest fan. Yes. And as our biggest fan, he wants to know and uh, to know everything that's going on in your life. He loves to hear things like that. But my question is, do you believe that? Ooh. God really wants to know exactly what is going on in your life. 
But one of the most encouraging um, moments in a relationship is when a friend can go to you and feel confident in talking to you about anything. Yeah. Um, you know, I always think about the, uh, those birthday sharings. Um, it doesn't uh, particularly relate to the ones that we have here, but even in general, mm -hmm. um, some of the best relationships come from those who will say things like, you know, I feel like I can just go up to you and I can just be myself. I feel like I can tell you about everything. I can talk to you about anything. Those are the best relationships that, uh, that we usually have is, or is the ones that we can go to first thing um, whenever, you know, certain situations arise and things like that. Is that your relationship with God tonight? Mm. So that's the type of relationship that, that we need to have with God. It's one that where we can confidently go to Him about anything. You know, Sean spoke about going confidently in prayer to God when uh, issues arise. And he preached about that uh, this past Sunday. And I was really convicted by that. I came up to him afterwards and I was like, that point, bro, I was, <laughs> I was really convicted. And um, the reason being was that this past Saturday, um, I was kind of in a, uh, in a bit of a panic. Um, where I, I wasn't I wasn't really going too well with you know finding places and I got to a point where I'm just like I'm just walking around the city I'm looking up at these buildings and I was like it can't be so hard to look I had to live in one of these trashy places I was really upset <laughs> and then uh, eventually I got to a point where I just calmed down and I started praying mm. but the point that that Sean had raised was you know I, the question that he asked was like do you go to God first mm. um, before you actually start to react to these uh, certain things and that's when I was hit by that um, and, and again, this is what we need to do in our relationship with God. Praying to God first instead of reacting to our problems. These are the things that, that please God. Moving on is offering yourself as a living sacrifice. Romans 12, 1, where it says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Next is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Romans 14, 17, 18 for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and approved by men. You know, someone, I, one could easily look at the Christian life as, as like a, a committed life or a, a prisoned life. Uh, but there, there's meant to be righteousness, peace, and joy that comes from being a Christian. There's meant to be fun. Um, and not, sadly, not many see the side to Christianity. Um, you know, and my question is, are you making uh, Christianity fun? Are you just this committed uh, churchgoer? Um, or rather, are you just genuinely having fun and you're, you're genuinely enjoying your relationship with God? You know, I, I think about last year's conference. I don't know about you guys, but I'm really excited for this year's conference. Yes. Yes. I cannot wait. Um, it, and for those of us who didn't go last year, you guys missed out. Amen. The majority of you weren't even disciples, but but it was it was the most amount of fun. Yeah. Um, I think even, um, we we went over to a retreat, stayed there for a couple days, and then on the last day we actually partied it up on a boat. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was yeah. amazing, and was it was incredible. it was great because the staff, because even the staff there were they were like, man, you guys had so much fun, but you didn't even have any alcohol. You guys weren't even you know there were no drugs or anything involved, but you guys had a, a whole lot of fun. It was just food and dancing, at, at, like uh, Chris was saying. There, there was. It was so much fun. And that's what Christianity is meant to be. Christianity is meant to be a, 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 a life of fun, a life of happiness. And, um, and if, you're, if you're not doing that, then amen. <laughs> you know, again, I, I think that's something that we, that we need to work on with, uh, with praying and, um, and also just going to other people and learning how to please God because that's, that's what we need to do. We need to learn how to please God first. Yeah. Uh, moving on. Uh, the way you live your life, Romans 12, 2, it says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. You know, doing God's will for your life and not yours. Uh, you need to be willing to give up your dreams for your life and take on his dreams for your life. And immediately I think of the, the Taco Bell sisters uh, household that we have here. Um, and individually, I, every single um, member um, in, this, in this household is like, the least expected person to be on this team. Uh, for example, you know, we've got Ashley, you know, she came all the way from Florida and she only intended to just come just for the uni. Um, but then all of a sudden, while she's in Sydney, comes to realize that she can't, uh, she can't attend the uni, but it's gonna be a lot more difficult uh, with her academics. So she, then she just gets to a point where, man, I don't know, like what's the point of me even going to New Zealand? Because I only meant to go there just for school. And then she decides to she decides to make the decision. You know what? Amen. I'm going to go to New Zealand. I'm going to go baptize. She has decided to put her dream to the side and take on God's dream. Um, I think of Jessica. 
Just ago, she was baptized in Orange County. We were both uh, from there. Come on. And, she, and, and I'm pretty sure, just like me, never would have imagined that uh, that we would be, you know, in uh, New Zealand on the other side of the world years later. <laughs> you know, she and she went and she she ended up flying from Orange County to and to Sydney for one thing, and then all of a sudden she finds herself on the New Zealand mission team. Mm -hmm. and it's like, what the heck just happened? Yeah. And 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 again, she just like Ashley, she has decided to push aside her dream. And take God's dream and go to New Zealand. I think of Sephora. 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 When she got reached out to, I remember I asked her. I was like, "What? What is it that you were? Why were you here then? Why were you in New Zealand?" She goes, "Well, I, I just came here just so that uh, you know I could travel. I had no intentions of staying here, uh, you know, uh, the whole time. And, and honestly, I was just gonna up and leave. You know, that that's about it." And she just only wanted to travel throughout all of New Zealand. She had no intentions of just staying here in Auckland. Oh. But because of her becoming a disciple, again, she has decided to put <coughs> her dreams to the side mm. and now adopt God's oh, dream. Sephora. And now she is here serving in the Auckland mm. Church. And we appreciate every single one of you guys. <laughs> oh, yeah. But that's what we have to do as disciples. We have to now put our lives, our dreams to the side and now take on God's, mm -hmm. um, God's dream. Next is giving money to support those in the ministry. Ooh. Philippians 4.18, I have received full payment and have more than enough. I am amply supplied now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent. They are a, fa a fragrant offering, an accept acceptable sacrifice pleasing to God. So in this scripture, the disciples gave to Paul to support him during his time in the full-time ministry. And just as the disciples gave wholeheartedly and willingly, we must do the same. As opposed to reluctantly or half-heartedly, um, as mentioned in uh, Malachi 1. And it's pleasing to God when we help one another in need, especially those who are in the ministry. Next is looking after your parents and grandparents in their old age. 1 Timothy 5.4 But if a widow has children or grandchildren, these, these should learn first of all to put their religion into practice by caring for their own family and so repaying their parents and grandparents for this is pleasing to God. As Christians, we, we must remember to keep in contact with our families. Uh, sometimes life and ministry and fun in the kingdom uh, come in, and the temptation is to completely uh, forget uh, is to completely forget about contacting your families. And in the, according to the scripture, this is unpleasing to God. Um, I, I think of a brother once. Uh, he had an argument with his dad, and uh, he was t he was coming up to me. He's like, "Yeah, bro, uh, my my dad was persecuting me. He was telling me that I was spending so much time uh, with the church, and uh, yeah, and I just rebuked him." And I was like, oh, okay, um, <laughs> all right, well, 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 my dad, well, well, <laughs> uh, I was like, hey, hey, man, all right, uh, you, you rebuked him because he was persecuting you because um, you spend so much time with the, okay, and he's like, and I was like, tell me more, he's like, yeah, so uh, he was telling me that, um, that I, I haven't spoken to him, you know, in such a long time, I don't really text him or spend time with him, and even when he asked me to spend time with him, I just don't spend time with him, and I, and I just go, is that true? And he goes, yeah. Like, Bro, he was not persecuting you. He was he was straight up calling you out of your unrighteousness. You're in sin. And, and uh, he was just taken aback. He was like, whoa, what, what? I was like, bro, you are in sin. You are not even staying in contact with your own family. You're not even spending time with your own family. And you're using the church as a reason to not spend time with your family. That is unrighteous. And so, again... As disciples, we need to learn um, that, yes, of course we need to, to seek first the kingdom, but we need to understand that there's a difference between seeking first the kingdom and completely forgetting about your family. Mm. So my challenge is, uh, my challenge to you is seek first the kingdom, but don't forget your family. Uh, next is keeping God's word in your heart, Bible study and memory scripture. Uh, Psalm 1914 uh, says, May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Psalm 104.34 says, May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. Ooh. Proverbs 22.18 says, For it is pleasing when you keep them in your heart and have all of them ready on your lips. Mm. My question to you uh, tonight is, what scriptures are on your heart? Which ones come to mind first when you go through tough times? Mm. Uh, for me, it's just these uh, three scriptures. Uh, Hebrews 12.11, Romans 8.28, Galatians 6.9, uh, Hebrews 12.11, where it talks about how no discipline uh, seems pleasant at the time, but later produces a harvest of righteousness. Uh, especially by those who have been uh, trained by it. Uh, Romans 8.28 talks about how God does all, uh, works out the good and all, uh, for those who, uh, who love him. And then uh, Galatians 6.9, where it talks about not being weary and doing good for at the proper time, we'll reap a harvest if we don't give up. Wow. Um, moving on, it, it, another thing that pleases God is being and staying saved. Mm. Romans 14.18, because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and receives human approval. 
2 Corinthians 2.15, For we are to God the pleasing aroma of Christ among those who are being saved and those who are perishing. Uh, next is having integrity in the small and big things in life. Yeah. In 1 Chronicles 29.17, it says, I know, my God, that you test the heart and are pleased with integrity. All of these things I have given willingly and with honest intent. I, and now I have seen with joy how willingly your people, uh, how willingly your people who are here have given to you. Next is selflessness. The scripture is a bit longer, but in uh, but just to summarize uh, the, the following scripture, it's it's basically the story of uh, Solomon asking God for discernment in leading God's people. And in Hebrews thirteen sixteen it says, "And do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices God is pleased." Another thing that pleases God is singing to God and giving Him thanks in song and prayer. In Psalm 69, 30 to 31, it says, I will praise God's name in song and glorify Him with thanksgiving. This will please the Lord more than an ox, more than a bull with its horn, or horns and hooves. So, basically, the scriptures talk about singing songs. My question is, are you singing songs to God outside of church? Um, outside of group sessions? And another question I have is, when was the last time you sang to God in your prayer? Um, and it's and, and it again uh, it reminds me of Chris uh, when he first arrived in Sydney. I remember um, this dude was always carrying around his uke, he's yeah. always playing all the time and, and things like that. And and I do recall Joe sharing a story once about how when he and Scotty were uh, they went over to uh, Marubra uh, Beach, basically by the the cliffs. Uh, they were they usually met up early in the morning just to go pray, and then all of a sudden, like in the distance, they can just hear like strumming, and they're like, "Where's that coming from?" And then all of a sudden they, they look in the distance and they find Chris sitting down just playing his uke and he's just singing songs to God while he's praying. And, and the thing is, is that what was the last time we, we've done something like that? You know, outside of a church event, outside of a, a session where we're like, guys, let's just start singing. When was the last time you actually just sung to God in your prayer? Because praising God is not meant to be only on Sundays. It's meant to be all the time. It's yeah. meant to be uh, when you're praying to God. And I think it's one of the most encouraging things. It sounds kind of awkward. Yes, I know not all of us are actually singers naturally. But again, it's the, the heart behind it. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but, but God is looking for, uh, for that kind of heart when it comes to singing. Yeah. Um, point number four, and this is my last point here, is Love the benefits guys. of pleasing Don't God. Uh, so the, some of the benefits of pleasing God. Firstly, he answers our requests and our prayers. Um, Exodus 33, 17, it says, And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked, because I am pleased with you, and I know you by name. 1 John 3, 21 to 22, Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from Him anything we ask, because we obey His commands and do what pleases Him. So because Moses pleased God, God answered Moses' request. When we have a heart that strives after pleasing God, He will answer our prayers. We can ask God for growth in, uh, for the church, visas, new job opportunities, but God is not going to answer it if we're not striving to please Him. Secondly, He makes our life go well. In uh, Numbers 14, 8, if the Lord is pleased with us, He will lead us uh, into that land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and will give it to us. Deuteronomy 28, 63, just as it pleases the Lord to make uh, you prosper and increase in number, so it will please Him to ruin and destroy you. You will be uprooted from the land you are entering to possess. Thirdly, we escape many traps and pain in our lives. Ecclesiastes 7, 26, it says, I find more bitter than death the woman who is a snare, whose heart is a trap, and whose hands are chains. The man who pleases God will escape her, but the sinner she will ensnare. So, uh, some of us can kind of come fall into this, uh, this thought of like, man, like if I were a disciple, I'd be doing this and that and this and that. The thing is, don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. It's not worth thinking about uh, where our lives would have been as non-Christians. Mm -hmm. Fourthly, God gives us wisdom, knowledge, and happiness. Uh, Ecclesiastes 2.26 says, To the person who pleases him, God gives wisdom, knowledge, and happiness, but to the sinner he gives the task of gathering and storing up wealth to hand it over to the one who pleases God. This too is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. In order to grow in these, we need to please God. Not just showing up in church, uh, to church or just sharing your faith when you don't want to, but actually aiming to please God. Yeah. And yeah. lastly, we gain eternal life and we live forever. Amen. Galatians 6.8, it says, Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. So in conclusions, guy, in conclusion, guys, 2 Corinthians 5.9, it says, So we make it our goal to please Him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. We must set our minds and hearts to pleasing God. It will not come naturally. It is a decision that leads to feelings, not the other way around. And that is a lesson. Wow. Yeah.